Vitaju vas šanovnilje dači, ve firi mladježno programa Contact Next Generation, ja Aleksandro Holek. Minuloga tižnja, naša programa bula presvjačna 150. jeričnici dnja narodžnja velikoji poetese Lesi Ukrajinke. Učni škole imeni Cjope Paljiv pod kjerivnestvom učiteljke Natali Mojsejiv pitodovali harno programu, je kao tremila bahato čudovih vidhukiv. V naših pereznevih programah te pobačite reportaži z inšeh ukrajinskih škil, presvjačni Tarasovi Ševčenkovi. A sjohodnji v naši programi nove recept vid našeho mikrošefa Marka Dzjalaka, je ki vin zapisal v buduči na vakacijah v horah Švicarije. A spočatku pro muziku. Mi že da mno ne male možljivosti posluhati ta potancijovati pod hru naših muzičnih hurtijev. Dovidujemo se sjohodnji, jak hurt zirka provodit svi čas pičas karantinu i jak jihnja muzika prenosit vsim radjist. Dobri večer and good evening everyone and thank you for taking the time to be on Contact Next Gen. Well, thank you very much for having us. Thanks for having us, Alexandra. Yeah, we're very happy to be here. Thank you. Of course. Um, so, first question. How has the pandemic affected Zirka? Do you remember the last time you performed? Well, the pandemic has affected Zirka like uh, a lot of other bands and in other uh, restaurants, establishments. It's, it's like our last gig actually was a wedding that we played uh, February 29th, uh, 2020. And uh, we never thought that that would be the last time we were going to get together, all six of us, to perform because everything after that got shut down. So I guess in the meantime, what has the band been up to since the start of the pandemic? Well, since the start of the, the pandemic, um, more and more organizations, uh, festivals were, were transitioning to a virtual presentation. And so uh, the Capital Ukrainian Festival organizers from Ottawa um, reached out to us you know, they were looking for, you know, a Zabava, virtual Zabava. So they were going to have other performers and they said, we, we want Zirka to still do the Zabava. So what can you do? So that's when I called Yurka, who's uh, had a lot of experience with, uh, with recording and, and video. So I reached out to him uh, to see what, what he could do uh, for us. Um, um, like uh, Mo said, you know, we had to put together this, uh, this virtual Zababa. So we contacted our good friends at Loud Mouse Productions, uh, Taras Bluznyuk and Mikey Unlisted, who did the video. So Taras recorded us all the, uh, you know, the standard recording procedure in a studio. We sent it off to Capital Ukrainian Festival. I think Mo did in a couple other festivals use uh, Yeah, and so from there, uh, we got contacted by the uh, Ukrainian festival in Dauphin, wondering if we could provide, because they did a, a bit of an overture towards their festival, which was a virtual event as well. Uh, we then supplied a lot of the video uh, for uh, the uh, Toronto Ukrainian Bloor West Festival, uh, which, uh, which utilized some of our uh, videos for that. And, and so... We were trying to stay in touch with, with uh, a lot of our fans and they really appreciated it because it was a really lonely time to be in lockdown. No Zababas, no weddings, no parties, no Zababas. So it was one way of reaching reaching out. Yeah, we also did the, uh, the Zababa at the uh, Rock Pile, which was a virtual thing. And uh, it was like a cross country thing. It started on the East Coast. We were the Ontario contingent then it moved out to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing, it was, it's, a, it's a weird thing because at that time, um, restrictions did open up a bit. So we had to, you know, as people were coming in, take attendance, you know, in case, like these are all protocol for any kind of establishment. So we had to take attendance. We had the, you know, everyone's wearing a mask. On stage, we had, you know, plexiglass in front of our microphone set up. So, yeah, it was, uh, and like, yeah, we had some Zirka masks made up. That's right. <clears throat> But uh, so we followed all the protocol and it was a live to uh, live to Facebook event. So so people were uh, as much as people were tentative to come out, which is understandable to come out to event in, in the time of a pandemic and social distancing. We still were able to connect with fans, which is is something that is really amazing and, and what we were aiming to do. And and it was wonderful to accomplish that. 
And I think, Alexander, the, the thing that really was the difference maker for us. So if you said to me, you know, what what did COVID like what did COVID really do to the band or what things came about because of COVID? I would say a new recording because that was something that was never planned for. And uh, when we did the the uh, prep work for the Capital Ukrainian Festival, we ended up recording eight songs. We didn't have enough songs, obviously, because it was only eight tunes. So we decided to go back in uh, once again when the restrictions eased up a bit. And uh, we went in, recorded five more. So our CD has 13 songs on it. And uh, once again, mixed that by Taras and... Uh, I think that the coolest thing that I noticed is it's just like, hey, it's a cool energy amongst the band. And uh, I think it's going to be uh, good. I think people will hear that when, uh, when they listen to the new tunes. So you talk about a new and upcoming album. Could you sort of go into more detail about Life in Isolation, stages one, two, and three? Yeah, well, we were, I think, just kind of trying to put a little, uh, a little funny spin on it because as you know, the stages open up, it's different levels of, you know, protocols and situations. So we were like thinking, well, because we didn't have, as I mentioned, we had gone into the studio and recorded the last batch of five separately. So when uh, one day myself and Mo were chatting, uh, we're just saying, hey, why don't we just, you know, release, uh, release this in these stages? So we'll have stage one, two, and three, which, you know, uh, relates to COVID and how COVID opens up and closes down. And, and it'll kind of, you know, put a spin on it back. Ми повернемося до розповіді про гурт Цирку після реклам. А зараз запрошую вас на продовження розмови із ансамблем Зірка. Now we have all uh, all the three stages and uh, people have been hearing them from different uh, times throughout the year. So there was no reason to keep it all uh, locked up. So that's why we had the three uh, different sessions there uh, broken up. So you mentioned that your last performance was at the end of February, but I saw on your social media pages that I think you were performing at a wedding in August. So what was that about? Well, social media gives it all away all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, we wouldn't have even imagined to have that kind of opportunity, but yes, we did. Um, we did uh, play a wedding, our, our first in only so far COVID wedding. Um, and it was, uh, it was very different. Um, it was limited. This was the time where we were limited to 50 people indoors. And again, all of the measures were in place with the social distancing, the masking. What, what didn't change was the, uh, the love that was in the room and the band's energy and the excitement of the guests and, and the happiness of the bride and groom at, at the end of it all. Yeah, when you stop and think about it, the decision by the bride and groom, you know, they would have had to then postpone and, and oh, still man. there's no, yeah. you know, there's, there's no certainty of when this is, this is going to be over. So fingers crossed that we'll be able to have in-person events soon. Um, but when do you think is the next time you'll be able to play in front of a live audience in person? I don't, uh, I don't, I can't see anything happening till, pla till past Labor Day, at least. So we're talking, you know, September, October, and that's fingers crossed. That's fingers crossed. I really don't, you know, that's pushing it. You know, uh, you know, things will open up slowly throughout the summer venues, and we'll have to see what the government does as to how many people they'll allow to these events, whether it be indoor or outdoor. But I think restrictions will be in place till way past Labor Day into September, October. Maybe we might be able to celebrate Malanka. Let's put it that way. Malanka 22. <laughs> it all depends on the vaccine rollout and how that goes, because without the vaccine, and the vaccine is not a cure. So I think that's important. I mean, even with the vaccine, uh, where you want to get at least 75 
percent of your population vaccinated uh, to to build that herd and that resistance uh, that uh, people talk about. Um, I I would tend to agree. I don't see the normal scene, and, and I cannot see that for a while. I really I can't. I mean, I think w- even with the vaccination process and continued protocols like masking and uh, and uh, you know hand sanitizer that that's going to be with us i believe for a, some time uh longer after what i think must have been the first january and february without malankas or zababas probably ever many of us are missing the fun energy and lively dancing as well as seeing our friends do you have any virtual events planned for the future so um we wanted to do uh, a virtual uh, Milanka or a Valentine's Day. And uh, again, I uh, reached out to Yurka, who's got a lot of, ex- of that experience. And without it, like right when we got into the planning stage, literally the next day, it was like, okay, we're going into lockdown. And it was like, oh mm-hmm. my God, like, so here we go again. Then you know, you kind of get discouraged, but then we're like, okay, well, maybe Valentine's. Well, then it got worse, right? And then it's, so we've been, we've been kind of in the holding pattern. So we were in the process and, well, when were we going to do it? I don't know if we have an answer for that. Like, maybe we're going to have to uh, just kind of roll with it and see what happens, you know? We, we really don't have not, nothing at this time. I think if there's one thing for certain, though, is uh, Zirka loves connecting with our our friends and our our fans, and there's always there we're always going to find opportunities to do that. So that is something that we can guarantee you, uh, some way somehow, whether it's a, a virtual event uh, when things open up versus other means. But uh, we're definitely going to be there and and connecting with people. Yeah, we can't wait for everything to get back to normal. That's the ideal situation. Yeah. You know, to get, you know, to be in a room of with hundreds of friends and family and, you know, just everyone getting together and smiling and not worrying about uh, any pandemic, just worrying about uh, if there's enough room on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I cannot wait, whether it's a virtual event by Zirka or in person. I am definitely looking forward to what you guys have in store. Oh, thanks, Alex. Well, thanks so much yeah. for having us, Sandra. We look forward to uh, to uh, getting out of this this uh, COVID the situation and back on stage. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thanks, Alexandra. Thank you. Сьогодні в нашій програмі новий рецепт від нашого мікрошефа Марка Дзялака, який він записав, будучи на вакаціях у горах Швейцарії. Кухарський ковпачок з мікрошефом Мареком. Hello, my friends, з вами я, мікрошеф Марек, та передача «Кухарський ковпачок». Я сьогодні в гостях, тому я готую не на моїй кухні. Сьогодні я буду готувати курочку з макарошками і помідорами чері. Курочку я вже розрізав і додав солі і перця, і тепер вона мусить смажитися на пательні. Треба її перекласти на пательню. Курочка смажиться, і тепер я зроблю е, помідори чері, додаю спеції, олійки і потім в духовку. А макарошки ви знаєте, як робляться. minutes 
лучше лейтер. Я витягнув патерню з духовки і хочу сказати два слова. Вона тепер дуже-дуже гаряча, тому треба носити рукавицю. Наша страва готова, бо на апетит можна йти їсти. З вами був я, мікрошеф Марк та передача «Кухарський ковпачок».
Dobre maju Oh, 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 oh,